Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for caring about us. We thank you that we can talk to you about everything. We have several concerns, and so we are bringing each one to you. We thank you for promising to give us your peace, Lord. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we love being in your presence. We thank you for the sacrifice you made for us on the cross. We thank you for helping our heart to rest in your presence. In a busy world, it is here that we find truth, grace, and mercy. Our hearts are overwhelmingly grateful. As it overflows with gratitude, may you present opportunities for us 
to serve more, Lord. Father, we thank you for intervening in our lives and allowing us to have a personal relationship with you. We thank you for your love for us today and always. We thank you for the blessings you've given us and our families. Help us, Lord God, to use those blessings to bless others. May we live a life of true joy as we see you at work around us today and always. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we hate to say it, but we have been guilty of grumbling and griping about all the challenges and trials. We have failed to be thankful and to remember that you are at work in our lives, even though, even through all the troubles. Please forgive us, God. We want to be people who keep our eyes on you and praising you, no matter what may come our way. So we thank you, God, for these blessings and these challenges. We know that you are in control of everything. We know you love us and we're all things together for our good. We choose to trust you, Lord. Teach us to be praisers who always find the good and not complainers who always find the negative situations. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us to accept both life's small challenges and your restoring help with grace and gratitude. Help us to remember that no challenge is too large or too small for us to call out to you. So please help us to remember that our heart can be filled in with joy every day, not just the easy days. Oh Lord, we thank you that you love us and that you give us comfort like no other. We thank you that you are a God who is well acquainted with all of our grief and that you ate when we ate. Help us to remember that in the midst of struggles, trials, and utter heartbreak, that you offer hope. You are the author of hope and salvation. We praise you that through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, all things are put under your feet. Allow us to trust your heart and believe that there is more to life than the heartache of this world. Allow us, Lord, to lean ever close to you in the midst of this fallen world. Thank you, God, for hope, peace, your love, your comfort, and your salvation. We thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. We thank you that your favor has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. Forgive us sometimes for forgetting that you are intimately acquainted with all of our ways and that you know what concerns us, and you cover us with a shield. And so, Lord, give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice, and make us strong by your huge favor and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
readings are taken from Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, and Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we begin with Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future with hope. The word of the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. The word of the Lord.
Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. This evening, I'm going to share with you on the topic, Trusting God in Challenging Times. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we wait to hear from you. You said in your word that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so, Heavenly Father, open our minds and give us wisdom so that as we hear from you, Lord God, that we will be able to apply the word that we've heard from you to our lives and that we will be a blessing to others as we walk this life. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My friends, trusting God in challenging times. Life, as they say, is like a roller coaster. There are times when you're up and everything is right with the world. But then there are also times when your world suddenly turns upside down. It is in these times that we tend to ask ourselves, but where is God? Trusting God is easy when things are going our way. But when the going gets rough, that trust can easily turn to doubt. Before you know it, you're blaming him for all the unfortunate things that are happening to us. But why is trusting God in challenging times so difficult to do? My friends, when we are going through a challenging time, we tend to be so consumed with our sorrow that we disregard everything else. Of course, it's perfectly valid to feel that way. But when we focus so hard on our own grief, we forget that there are people who care for us. We do not notice the people who are hurting because we are hurting. Our problems and struggles become the center of our attention. We zoom in on that and in the process, it becomes magnified. Soon enough, we forget our blessings. We forget the good things that God is doing to us because of the trials that he gave us. Yes, God gives us trials. But oftentimes, it's nothing compared to his blessings. It's like staring at a blank sheet of paper with a little black dot in the center. We tend to zoom in on the dot, on the imperfection. Yet, we fail to notice that there is a whole lot of blank, clean space around surrounding it. And just like that, our faith in God erodes. And we slowly find ourselves descending into a labyrinth of self-doubt, anger, and resentment. But that's not how God wants us to be, my friends. And I doubt that's what you want for yourself too. Living with anger and resentment makes us a bitter person. Before we know it, we're projecting those feelings to the people around us. Those people will in turn treat the people around them the same way. It's a small wonder then that the world we live in today is full of people who are mean to others for no particular reason. It started with a person losing their trust and confidence in God because of a few stumbling blocks. But as I've said, finding the courage to trust God during the darkest moments of our lives can be a challenge. My friends, if you feel yourself being weighed down by problems right now, here is how you can trust in God even in the midst of hardship. And this goes for me as well. Why trust God in difficult times? Before we talk about the how, let's first understand why we need to have absolute faith in God. Number one, all things are possible with him. As Jesus once said, everything is possible for one who believes. And we see this in Mark chapter 9, verse 23. My, my friends, whatever concerns you have right now, 
No matter how seemingly impossible it may be, know that it's possible with God. This is why we have the word miracle, because there are things that our human understanding have never fathomed to be possible, but it happened nevertheless. If you need any more proof that everything is possible with God, just look at the world around you. If he can create the world and everything that's in it, then what can't he do? Two, he has plans for you and he has plans for me. My friends, you may not understand why all these things are happening to you or me right now, but someday we will recognize or realize that it's all a part of God's plan. Take the story of Joseph in the Old Testament as an example. Joseph was sold by his brothers into slavery and was even thrown into prison. But if not for that, he wouldn't have been able to interpret the king's dream and save the people from famine. That's how God works. God allowed all of that to happen to Joseph because his ways are higher than our ways. And we heard it earlier in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9. He designed us according to his purpose, even while we were still in our mother's womb. His plans for us are not to harm us, but to prosper us and to give us hope and a better future. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Thirdly, he knows you more than you do. My friends, sometimes we think we know what we want only to find out that it doesn't really make us happy. That is because most of the time we tend to want the things that society wants for us. We spend all of our time at work to purchase the items we don't need and impress the people we don't like. God, on the other hand, knows the desires of our hearts. We might have plans of our own, but he establishes our steps. He knows that we really, he knows what we really want deep inside of our hearts. We can hide nothing from him. He knows our unspoken thoughts and the lines that we have to constantly keep internalized. So if he didn't answer your prayer or my prayer, that doesn't mean he does not care for us. On the contrary, he cares so much for us. That's why he won't give us the things or the items that he knows will only harm us. Fourthly, he is our refuge. We all have those moments where the world seems so chaotic that we just want to hide from it all. It is in these moments, my friends, that we need God the most. He is our fortress and an ever-present help in trouble. He does disappoint those who call on him. Everyone may desert you, but he will always be by our side. Whether you are passing through high waters or walking through fire, he will never leave us alone. He is the defense for the helpless and our forever stronghold. Remember that God never disappoints those who call on him. Remember how the Israelites wandered for 40 years in the desert? Despite the harsh conditions, they were able to thrive. The Lord did not get, just give them food and water. He also provided them a safe refuge from their enemies. They called on him and he answered. He always does. So how can we trust God in difficult times? Yes, it can be challenging to trust God in our darkest moments, but it can be done. Here are a few strategies that we can use to grow in faith even in challenging moments. Number one, we need to trust in God's word. When God said, come to me all you who labor and are heavily laden and I will give you rest, he means it. Remember, God does not go back on his word. He gave Sarah a son. He freed the Israelites from servitude. He fulfilled his promise of salvation by sending his only begotten son. 
All throughout the Bible, you will see stories of how he keeps to his word. So you and I have no reason to doubt that he will give us rest when we are tired and weary. All he asks is for us to trust him. The second strategy, let us be grateful. A grateful heart has no time to dwell on the negative. We need to learn to thank God for even the smallest things. Sometimes they're blessings in disguise. Being able to wake up each day is already a blessing, my friends, because not everyone does. Having something to eat is another blessing. There are several people around the world who go through the day without eating anything. At all times, let us be grateful. Thirdly, be courageous. Courage does not mean the absence of fear. Rather, it's about soldiering on despite the fear. This is what God wants us to do. He wants us to be courageous in times of adversity. He doesn't give us trials to break our spirit, but to strengthen us. Remember the story of Daniel? He probably was very scared of the lions that were trying to eat him. But instead of giving in to his fear, he entrusted his life to God. That, my friends, is the true definition of courage and trusting God in challenging moments. Fourthly, take up your cross. Jesus said that whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. This means that to be a true disciple of Christ, we must learn to take up our cross. Our sufferings resemble the cross that Jesus carried on the way to Calvary. He patiently carried it because he knows it was the only way to save us. My friends, we must do the same for him. Enduring our trials and suffering is a testament to our willingness to become Christ's follower in every sense of the word. Number five, wait on the Lord. Waiting for something isn't really easy, and that's the way we consider patience a virtue. But as we've mentioned, God has plans for us. The pain and suffering that you are going through right now are all a part of his plan. And this is why trusting God involves waiting on him. So how do we wait on the Lord? The Bible says that to wait on the Lord is to be patient in tribulation and constant in prayer. He will fight for us if we only learn to be still. And so don't let our worries and anxiety get the better of us. As the Apostle Matthew says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. So instead of asking God why he's not answering our prayers, let us ask him to give us the strength during this waiting season and consider this time as an opportunity to work on our spiritual growth. And the last strategy, final strategy, Walking in faith. As you and I may well know by now, trusting God is something that is easier said than done. It's not something that can be done overnight either. Trusting God completely involves walking in faith every day. It's relinquishing our worries and fears and accepting what God has in store for us. So my friends, when we lift everything up to him and trust in his wisdom, we don't exactly become fearless, but it gives us the courage to face the difficult times with hope that God will always have our backs. Amen. Hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Jesus 
God's blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But holy trust in Jesus' name Christ the Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We thank you that we can live in your light and walk in your truth. May the things that you have revealed and thoughts that we have shared dwell in our hearts and stir us to action. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Waking, sleeping, I am waking.
for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.